I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have John Hargrave, the author of Blockchain for Everyone. John, thank you so much for being on the show. It is a pleasure to see you again and to have you here. Ashton, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I'm very excited to learn about Blockchain for Everyone today. I do have a copy of the book, but I haven't read it yet. Um, and I'm excited to hear your take on it. So if you would kick it off, I'd love to hear a little bit about, you know, why did you write the book and what's the story behind it? Yeah, I started out as a comedy writer. Uh, I've been writing kind of at the intersection of comedy and technology for about 20 years. And uh, what I do is make technology accessible in a really user-friendly, fun way. I'm like a professional simplifier. And uh, so when I got involved in blockchain, when I, uh, when I bought Bitcoin back in 2013, I got so interested in this, but I found that most blockchain books were really difficult to understand. Uh, they were hard to get through. And I wanted to make a book that people would read cover to cover, a book that was funny, that was interesting, and it was just a great read. And that's how my book, Blockchain for Everyone, came about. Uh, it's the story of my forays into this uh, crazy world of blockchain, first as an investor in Bitcoin, and then uh, building a whole company in this space. All the crazy characters uh, that I've met and all the adventures that I've had. But along the way, you learn about the technology in a really fun and funny way. And people tell me now, this is the greatest compliment they say, I started reading it and I couldn't put it down. I read it cover to cover and I said, my job here is done. Drop the mic. <laughs> That's amazing, John. It's great to hear that you've had such great feedback and, um, and that it's more than just you know the technicals and it can get pretty um, complex and dry depending on what your interests are just reading about the technical part about blockchain but I know yeah. that yours is much more encompassing than that and you do have a part about you know why people need to reinvent themselves and sort of your story of lifelong learning if you could touch on that part of the book that'd be great yeah so I was approaching the age of 50 and I uh, had this uh, successful company but it wasn't growing as fast as I wanted it to and I said I've got to reinvent myself. This was about the time that I bought Bitcoin. And I saw the price of this Bitcoin going through the roof. This was in the great crypto boom of 2017. And I said, I'm going to completely reinvent myself, reinvent this company, go all in on blockchain. And what I believe is that the world moves so fast today, technology moves so fast that we are called to constantly reinvent ourselves. We have to be what I call lifelong learners. And think of yourself as having like a skill stack, a very specific, unique collection of skills. And you're gonna constantly be adding new skills onto your skill stack. So as I did that with blockchain, as I really immerse myself in this new technology, and started to learn about it, started to build a business around it, what I found was that I was personally reinventing myself. So this reinvention, it's really a story about personal reinvention. This micro story is kind of a snapshot of the larger story of reinvention of how blockchain is reinventing our global financial and economic system. So our little picture here, our little story that you read about in the book is really a microcosm of the macrocosm of reinvention that's going on in blockchain. And that's really exciting. That's very exciting. And it seems like the book is doing very well right now. And, and congrats to all the success. It is. Thank you. It has yeah. a perfect five-star rating on Amazon. It's an audible bestseller. And I'm just so proud wow. of it. Thank you. That's awesome. And um, But things weren't always good. And I think you touch on that in the book as well. You know, there's been some dark hours uh, along this journey. And maybe you could reflect back on those times uh, when things were the darkest. Yeah. So as I said, we went all in on blockchain uh, in 2017, which, as you know, was the great crypto boom. And then in 2018, everything started to tank and it turned into what we now call the great crypto winter. And uh, they were dark days, Ashton. It was very, very difficult because suddenly we went from this boom time when everybody was making money to this very bust kind of market cycle where it was tough to make money. 
And what we learned in that space and what I personally learned was the fortitude, the resilience, the courage, all the personal qualities that were called on to uh, draw upon in these times of great difficulty. And in the book, I talk about not only how we made it through from a business perspective and from a crypto investing perspective, but how we made it through from a human perspective, how we, uh, how, how we kind of steeled ourselves for that very difficult downturn in market cycle. Now, what I believe is those of us who survived, those of us who've made it all the way through the boom and the bust, of this uh, crypto market. We are the survivors and we are leading. We have earned the right to lead. We've earned the right to lead. And you, Ashton, you've been here through it all. And you also, you're a real leader in this space because you have stuck with it. Despite the market cycles, the up and downs, you believe in it long term. Mm -hmm. You've put your money where your mouth is and you've built this amazing show around it. And that's the kind of perseverance that this book teaches you how to do. Feels good to be a survivor, doesn't it, Ashton? You just got to keep working hard every day, John. And I know that uh, we're both working on that path. So thanks for that acknowledgement as well. Um, you know, I did skim through the book and saw a little part about how you're, you're at the Fed, you know, undoing the Fed. And I uh, <laughs> saw a little bit of humor in that. If you could ex explain that story to the audience, that'd be great. Yeah, it's a funny story where we're doing a deal uh, in the Fed. So I had been invited uh, to a conference at the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve is, of course, our central bank, but it's also uh, a building. It's actually 12 buildings, the, uh, the central banks. And there's one a branch here in uh, Boston where we're located. And uh, it's this huge, imposing monolith of a building. And to get in, you have to go through all these security gates and be frisked. Uh, and I go into this conference. And then after the conference, I go to take a conference call uh, for my business. And we're doing a deal in the basement of the Federal Reserve. I'm in the lunchroom of the Fed. I'm literally in the belly of the beast, Ashton. <laughs> I'm in the commissary at the Federal Reserve surrounded by like millions of dollars of, uh, of cash. And we're doing a deal with this entrepreneur who's building one of the first stable coins. And as you know, a stable coin is a crypto asset that holds its value against the US dollar. And it strikes me as I'm talking to this guy that I'm doing a deal in the basement of the Federal Reserve that will undo the Federal Reserve. I'm literally... <laughs> taking apart the system that I am currently sitting inside of. And I thought, that is just an irony sandwich. That is like irony layered in between several stacks of irony. And uh, it was especially hilarious because the stable coin he was proposing was actually backed by gold reserves. So here you have a stable coin that people are saying is worth nothing that's actually backed by gold while I'm in the middle of the Federal Reserve, which has all of this paper that is no longer backed by anything at all. And I thought, that's an irony burrito. Yep, that's definitely ironic. And uh, it's interesting how times are changing and uh, old parties will need to adapt um, and stable coins will continue to adapt as well so that we, we can keep moving forward and, and use the money for the people and the, the, the money that the people want to use. So yeah. it seem, seems like quite the journey um, and the ironic journey and the funny journey um, and the spiritual journey. I saw in the tagline, it's called, you, you almost call the book a spiritual quest. You know, what, what did you mean by that? It is like a vision quest to enter into this space and to really stick with it long term, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a blockchain pioneer, whether you're an investor, whatever you're doing in this space, to really stick with it, you have to believe in this space with every fiber of your being. And as I went through this, it was enlarging in a spiritual sense. It was uh, a, an, a, an exercise for me, a daily exercise in motivating myself to keep going one foot at a time, one foot in front of the other. So I used all these tools or kind of hacks throughout this difficult period of 2018, like music 
for example, I actually created a Spotify playlist called Blockchain for Everyone. It's a free playlist with all the music that was just positive and motivating and upbeat kind of helped me make it through. I had a whole series of mantras. I, I write them in the book. I, I call them mind hacks that I wrote down in a little moleskin notebook every day to myself, kind of affirmations to get me through it. Uh, I did a ton of blogging, kind of explaining this new space that we were building and my vision for it. So all of these very specific kind of actionable uh, uh, things that I did, techniques to make it through, those are the techniques I want to share with the world because there will be more difficult times ahead. And also, we all face difficult times, whether it's in building a business in the crypto space or some other personal challenge. And that's what I really wanted to share with your viewers, share with the readers and share with the world. Yeah, well, congratulations on that because it seems like it's been doing really well. When we saw each other at the World CryptoCon, you yeah. had your booth with all the bo books there and they sold out. You know, there wasn't even sold any out. books left when, when I got there. So yeah. um, that was great. And, you know, how have you found the time to travel to these different conferences while still trying to s market the book and then, you know, continue on what's coming after the book here? How have you managed you, you, to... You don't get a lot of sleep, time? Addison, working in this space, you know. You know, you don't get a lot of sleep. But uh, yeah, it was very exciting to sell out at uh, World CryptoCon. And then I went to Blockchain Expo. And um, everywhere that we've gone to sell the book face to face, we've just gotten great feedback from readers. And uh, what people love about it is there's a special deal with the book for your listeners, which is you can get $25 in crypto when you buy the book and the book is about $25. So you essentially get the book for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so there's a little bookmark inside the book when you buy it uh, that has a QR code, you scan the QR code and it opens the Coinbase wallet app and it has $25 of DAI loaded into it. DAI of course is stable coin, so it's gonna hold its value. Uh, and then you can use that DAI uh, within the Coinbase ecosystem. Uh, and so because of that, like it's been selling like crazy and you can only get that deal if you go to blockchainforeveryone.com. So you can buy it on Amazon, you can buy it on Audible, but the special $25 deal uh, is only available for your uh, readers or listeners through uh, blockchainforeveryone.com. That's awesome, John. And, and how did you manage to partner up with DAI? I know, you know, it's ironic because they are stable coin that's, you know, what you were talking about in the story and it's actually one of the most popular and well-used stable coins yeah. so i'm interested how you how you manage that yeah it's a funny story um when i uh pitched the book to simon and schuster my publisher i said uh wouldn't it be cool if when people bought the book they could get 25 dollars worth of bitcoin and uh, my editor who is this brilliant guy named jeremy ruby strauss uh, he's had all these new york times bestsellers he says uh you know, John, this is how he talks. He goes, uh, you know, John, uh, the last time I heard an original idea in the book publishing industry was never. And that is an original idea. And I was like, that'd be brilliant. $25 in Bitcoin. And imagine the price of Bitcoin goes up. Well, the price of Bitcoin could be worth more than the book. So you literally would not be able to keep the book on the shelves. You'd have to hire a security guard to stand guard over the books. So I love this idea. Well, it turns out packaging Bitcoin with physical books is actually much harder than it sounds. It's all kinds of logistical challenges. So we approached uh, Maker, uh, that is uh, the creator of the DAI stablecoin, and Coinbase, that makes the Coinbase wallet. And uh, they were kind enough to uh, say, basically, we will contribute a large amount uh, of DAI for this promotion. And for them, what they're getting is new users of uh, the Coinbase wallet and mm -hmm. the DAI cryptocurrency, the DAI stablecoin. And what we're getting is just a great uh, value for our readers. And at the end of the day, like that is the mission of the book is getting people to actually own this stuff. So blockchain for everyone is the name of the book. And that's really our, our goal, getting everyone on blockchain. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for the time, John. I'll leave those links in the description box below. And uh, that's all the time that we have for the interview, unfortunately, but it's been a pleasure hearing about your story, hearing about the book, and I'm looking forward to seeing you around at the next conference. And uh, let's follow up in the near future uh, to hear about this, you know, the future success of uh, Blockchain for Everyone. So thank you. Ashton, keep up the great work.